Welcome back to Yoshi Entertainment, everybody. So just recently, Justin Timberlake, JT, made the headlines because he was, drum roll please, driving drunk. Driving while intoxicated is actually what he got arraigned for. He was released from police custody in New York. Now, I've said before, don't put these celebrities on a pedestal. They are not good people. I don't have to know them personally. Just seeing their life on display, what they do on the regular, is enough to tell me what they're really about. What they participate in and who they are involved with. Even the songs that they make, people will swear up and down to high heaven, if you will, that all song lyrics have nothing to do with anything. It's just song lyrics. No, ma'am, no, sir. Those song lyrics are very telling. And if you actually pay attention, you'll know what you need to about these people. We've seen Justin Timberlake do a lot down through the years. As I've said before, don't trust these people. Don't put them on a pedestal. Because look at the kind of things that they do. We all know that if any regular person got caught DWI, they would have got the book thrown at them. But anyways, apparently the police pulled him over in the middle of the night, quite literally. And I quote, around 12.37 a.m. on Tuesday morning because, and I quote, he allegedly failed to stop at a stop sign and failed to maintain in his lane of travel, In quote. This reminds me of the Danny Lay situation. I don't know how fast he was driving. This is how people get hit and unalived in accidents on the road. Them actually doing what they're supposed to. And then some drunk idiot who decided to be irresponsible and drink before getting in a car hits them. It's sad because it's always the people who are driving drunk under the influence or while intoxicated or the ones who are out here unaliving people. Now the officer stopped him and asked him, you know, I'm sure the rundown, the usual rundown. Sir, are you okay? Have you been drinking tonight? In his response, and I quote, had one martini and I followed my friends home according to court records, end quote. Now I'm going to repeat what everybody says in these kind of situations. Friends don't let friends drive drunk under the influence or while intoxicated. What kind of friends were those? But I don't care if he had just had a half of a martini. You're not getting in that car. And I feel like if his friends actually cared about him or anybody else on the road who they could have accidentally hit, they would not have let him get in that car. But we're not going to blame the friends. We're going to blame him because he was the one who did this. He put himself, quite literally, in this situation. Now, the officer said that his eyes, and I quote, were bloodshot and glassy. And there was a strong odor of an alcoholic beverage emanating from his breath. It's alleged in court records, end quote. But he just had one martini. I want you to look at this picture and tell me if it looks like he just had one martini. And I could be wrong. I've told y'all before. We've got to say this allegedly this speculation that. But if one martini has you running stop signs and not staying in your lane. You don't need to ever in your life again drink anything let alone a martini. Like drinking for you is over as far as I'm concerned. I don't think people should indulge in alcohol anyways. But oh, it gets worse. So the police officer, or apparently in the records, if you will, the documents, if you will, it was noted that he was, and I quote, unable to divide attention, end quote. And they also added that, and I quote, he had slowed speech, he was unsteady of foot, and he performed poorly on all standardized field sobriety tests, end quote. But he only drank one martini. One. If any person drinks one drink, one alcoholic drink, I don't care what it is, and failed all standardized field sobriety tests, wasn't steady, had slowed speech, wasn't staying in their lane, didn't stop at the stop sign, either they're lying when they said they had only one drink, or they ought not ever drink another alcoholic drink in their life. I'm serious about that. And either way it goes, whether he was lying or he just didn't have a high alcohol tolerance, he needs to put the glass down. 
He also was asked, if I'm not mistaken, three times to take a chemical test, which he refused on all three times. Now, I do understand that sometimes there are some shady cops out there. They'll have some rigged tests because they're trying to get people, so to speak. That does happen. We're not going to act like it doesn't. Although a lot of situations, these people be already on stuff and under the influence and they're too drunk to actually drive right. Too drunk or under the influence to actually care about who they could hurt on the road if they get into their car in that condition. But oh, they're aware enough to know, oh, I can't take the test because I'll fail. Now, I do understand that different people have different reactions, if you will, to being under the influence. But what I said still stands. Now, for quite some time, people have been alleging, there have been rumors, that he has a problem. And y'all know what I usually say concerning stuff like that. First of all, you got to acknowledge that you do have a problem if that's the case. Then you need to seek help. But people don't want to do that. So many people know they have issues and they don't want help. This is why I go so hard in the paint against this kind of stuff because people like that are more of a problem and a detriment and a hazard to the people around them. Because again, he'll be the one getting in his car and hitting somebody else and hurting them or unaliving them, but then he'll get out and be okay. Because he's a celebrity, he'll receive a slap on the wrist just like that Danny Lee situation that I made a video about. And one of the worst parts about this, aside from him putting somebody else on the road in danger, is the excuses that people use to justify these people, especially these celebrities who do stuff like this, that I'm starting to notice is a common occurrence amongst these celebrities. They love to say stupid stuff like, oh, well, he's stressed out and, you know, he's going through a lot. He's on tour. You know, they said that touring is stressful for them and hogwash because that still does not justify them doing this goofy mess that still does not excuse them being him being this level of irresponsible although this does not surprise me because he's always been this level of reckless all throughout the years of his career we have literally seen him do stuff that he has no business doing making very very horrendous decisions we can go all the way back to the days where he was with Brittany the ways that he did her that was not right and then it was flipped to look like it was her and she had to suffer by herself allegedly until she wrote that book and then he wanted to scramble to try and save his reputation do we really have to go there with the Janet Jackson situation And then whenever he played in that movie, Palmer, if I'm not mistaken is the name, with his co-star, I forgot what the young lady's name was, he got caught by the photographer with her hand all over his thigh and then tried to chalk it up to, oh, it's just, you know, that's what actors do. It's not that big of a deal. The wife is not phased by it. You know, she's just downplaying it, et cetera, et cetera. And then also had the audacity when questioned further on this, To say something along the lines of, if I'm not mistaken, and I quote, we were drunk. This ain't French. Where's the self-accountability? He is the married individual. And speaking of the married individual, how many times has he allegedly cheated on his wife? What's the point of all of this, you might ask? Well, I'm so glad that you did. He has a lack of self-control, self-accountability, as I mentioned before. He has issues that he doesn't want to address and fix, which is why he keeps doing all this ridiculous stuff that he keeps doing. But again, we've got to draw another line at whenever it endangers somebody else's life. I think that's worth calling out, don't you all? Now, he made this statement about his precious little children. Very heartfelt, I'll admit even myself. And I quote, my two greatest gifts. I learn more about myself every day just because you both chose me to be your daddy, end quote. First of all, those children didn't choose him. He was the one who chose to have children. Children don't choose their parents. I just had to point out how ridiculous that actually was, despite how heartfelt the sentence is. We need to get back to calling people out whenever they say stuff that's not right. I don't care how good it sounds. But anyways, going on with the quote, I will always be there for you through your peaks and valleys, dot, 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 to lift you up and show you how high you can take this life and to pick you up when you fall. And of course, to flood you with insufferable dad jokes. I love you both so much. Thank you for giving me my biggest purpose. 
Now, for today, let's play a game where we all just chill and let Dad watch the final round of the U.S. Open. Now, I'm sure people probably thought that this was cute and funny, but I didn't told y'all already just a couple of seconds ago, actually. I don't care how cute and funny something sounds. We're going to call it out on this channel. He just got done talking about how grateful he was to have his children, his sons, if you will, in his life, but clearly not grateful enough to actually be a decent example as a father by doing the right thing, by treating people right. Because also something he seems to have a habit of is throwing women under the bus. I don't see how he's going to be a good example to his sons when he can't even be a good public example in front of just normal people. He talked about how he loved them so much, but couldn't love the woman who had the children for him by not cheating on her allegedly. And obviously he clearly doesn't have enough respect for God to respect his wife. Because if you respect and love God, you will respect and love your wife. You won't have her out here looking like the woman who just decided to stay with you because there's nothing she can do or say to keep you from cheating on her. Again, allegedly. And he also talked about how he's going to be there for them through everything to lift them up and all this kind of other stuff. First of all, something I need parents to understand, to tell your children you'll always be there for them is not a very wise thing to do because even in all of your very human capabilities to the maximum there are going to be some places where you are going to end up falling short and it will crush your children i know you don't mean to but it will crush your children you need to get them to understand i'm going to do the best that i can as a parent but i'm human at the end of the day I'm not going to use it as an excuse to be a raggedy parent but if i fail in an area understand it's because i'm human and i'll do the best that i can to make it up to you to apologize and then to do better don't i'm not going to make myself look like i'm some godlike figure that's going to always be able to be there for you and do everything i'm going to do the best that i can again within my human capabilities but again I am human, I will fall short. And it's certainly going to be hard for him to be there, despite him being a celebrity and having a whole bunch of money and access to a whole bunch of things that regular parents don't have, if he's sitting in a jail cell because he didn't got caught driving under the influence. It's going to be real sad if these kids grow up and they're adults and then they realize and they look back on this because I didn't told y'all this stuff never goes away on social media and they realize he didn't mean none of what he said because none of his actions lined up for it. It would be really sad when they get 20, 30 years old and they see this post again somewhere on social media and go, wow, dad did this more for publicity and the people looking at him and that was actually deluded enough to believe this stuff that he ever did for us because he really wasn't about this kind of life. He was really out here doing stuff he had no business doing and people were excusing and justifying it. Wow. Like I said, it would be real sad if that had to be them 10, 20, 50 years from now. Anyways, like I've said before on many of these videos, accountability is the key word. Change behavior I'm sorry, actually acknowledging that you have a problem and then actually going to get the help. Although anyways, people have got to want to do better and want to do the right thing. That's another key word, key phrase, if you will. I've got to want to do the right thing. I've got to want to do better. Anyways, y'all let me know what y'all think about all of this down in the comments below respectfully. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all all have a very blessed, beautiful, and safe day.